So let's go ahead and start by talking about the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom is the one that is most detailed, right? Uh, I will go over the structure of the prokaryotes and viruses at the end. But first thing we have to do is we have to let's start with the animal kingdom. When we talk about the animal kingdom, so I told you inside a kingdom we have a lot of phylum, right? Inside a kingdom uh, we have multiple know. phylums. So inside the animal kingdom we have these phylums, right? We have phylum arthropods, right? Phylum arthropods. We have phylum nematodes. We have phylum vertebrates. We have phylum annelids. And we have phylum mollusks. Now, when we talk about these phylums, inside the phylum, we can have multiple classes. You don't have to worry about the classes, for example, in nematodes, in annelids, in mollusks. You don't have to worry about the classes over here. You are uh, going to look over here, phylum vertebrate. So in phylum vertebrate, you have to, in the here, you will need to know what classes are found inside phylum vertebrate, right? So let's start with the phylum vertebrate because it's the largest and we need to know the classes inside it. So starting with our first class, that is the, um, let's uh, talk about our birds, right? When, uh, okay. When we talk about the vertebrates, right? First of all, let's do a little bit concept about what vertebrates are. Vertebrates are animals which have a vertebral column, right? And I'll type this out for you as well. Let's take a look. So vertebrates. Uh, are teacher, animals. vertebrates are the animals with backbone, right? Yes. Are animals which have a vertebral column. A vertebral column is, yeah, it's your spine, right? The spine that you have. So the spine, uh, uh, your spinal cord consists of the actual cord, which has the nervous tissue, which has the nerves inside of it. And then you have the vertebra. The vertebra are the bones that are making your backbone. So they basically in the middle of the vertebra, you have your spinal cord, and around it, you have those bones. They are known as vertebra. And all together, that is known as a vertebral column. So basically, our backbone, our spine. So um, uh, uh, when you go ahead and talk about it, uh, what are some features that are shared by nearly all vertebrates, right? One feature that is shared by vertebrates is we have to talk about the way they maintain body temperature. So when you talk about body temperature, you must have you know heard that okay, you might have heard fish are cold blooded or reptiles are cold blooded, right? That is not actually a correct term. Okay, because um uh when you're going to go ahead and talk about it, uh, it's not a correct term because if you have a fish that lives in warm waters the blood will actually be warm. Or if you have a lizard that is, you know, sitting outside in the sun, the blood will be warm, right? So the term cold-blooded is not exactly correct, right? Mm -hmm. Similarly, the term warm-blooded is not exactly correct. The term that is better to use, the term that the scientists are now is using is poikilothermic. And the other term that they use is homo, homeo, sorry. Poikilothermic means variable temperature, right? Means variable temperature. That the temperature of the blood is varying depending upon the surroundings, right? That the temperature of the body is changing depending upon the surroundings. So if a fish lives in really hot water, its body temperature will rise. The same fish goes to really cold water, its body temperature will fall, right? Homeothermic, homeothermic basically means that we are, the body has a constant temperature. 
like our body. Our body has a constant temperature of 37 degrees centigrade. If I go to the, uh, if I go to the uh, North Pole, or if I go all the way to a desert, my internal body temperature will stay 37 degrees centigrade. The inside, the internal temperature of my body will not change. That is homeothermic because my body is maintaining the temperature. It's not changing. Depending, It does not depend upon the environment. The uh, temperature of my body does not depend upon my external environment. Poikilothermic means that the temperature is variable and the temperature of the body will change. The internal temperature of the, the body will change. Yes, depending upon yes, depending upon the surroundings. Exactly. Uh, so, so teacher, like we human beings, like our temperature does not depend on the environment. Yes, our temperature does not depend upon the environment. Uh, our body is able to, so basically our body can regulate and we will uh, study how the body can regulate or how the body actually maintains a constant temperature we will study that as well when we do the topic of our uh, coordination so um our body has certain features certain mechanisms that allow us to maintain the temperature to a certain value right which is why we are able to maintain a constant temperature which is why so those animals that are poikilothermic that have a variable temperature so they are affected by their surroundings so if it gets cold if it gets too warm that's why you must have heard that oh if you um uh, if you take a lizard or you take a reptile or you take a fish and you move them from their environment to a different temperature environment so they might actually end up dying right that's because they do not have the mechanism to maintain the body temperature so if to go to a cold water of the fish go to a colder water body temperature will fall down and that might not the body temperature might fall down and that might actually end up uh you know causing the fish to die so uh homeothermic animals are those that can maintain the body temperature so they have these mechanisms inside their body that will you know for example if i go somewhere really cold i will start shivering if i go somewhere really hot i will start sweating so my body has mechanisms that will help control the temperature. Of course, we are talking about normal temperature change. If I go somewhere extremely cold, uh, uh, obviously my body temperature is going to drop, right? So, right, uh, so th these are the two types of animals that we're going to be dealing with. Now, in your exam, if you write down warm-blooded and cold-blooded, by the way, that is completely correct. They're not going to mark you. Uh, incorrectly for it at all. Uh, in fact, in your syllabus, they have written that for the purposes of simplification to make it easy, the uh, you we are using the term cold blooded and hot blooded. But these are the correct terms for these. Uh, for this now, when we talk about fish, right? When we talk about fishes, so what? Let's start with in the vertebra. We have got phylum vertebra. So we have got the class of fish. In the class fish, what features am I going to be looking at? First of all, they're going to be... Uh, they will have gills. Yeah, they will have gills, exactly. They're going to be poikilothermic, which means that they're going to be cold-blooded. Uh, teacher, if in exam, I like this term instead of like uh, cold-blooded. So will I still get the marks? Yeah, yeah. They are smooth, they are streamlined, streamlined meaning that their body has a certain, they have like a, a, a shape that allows them to swim easily in the water. They have that particular shape that allows them to swim easily. Yeah, do they have fins? Within the water, so there is minimum resistance. They have smooth, streamlined, yeah, to minimize resistance right, during swimming, and uh, they have overlapping scales, their bodies are steady, and uh, they have fins, of course. They have fins, and they are, uh, also when you're going to go ahead and talk about it, they have these gills, right, they have gills, and the gills, are protected by a 
bony plate. The bony plate is known as an operculum. Right? And fish tend to reproduce sexually. And uh, uh, they usually lay eggs, right? So, okay. They reproduce sexually, but it's uh, fertilization happens externally. What does that mean? That means that what happens is that the female fish will is going to lay the eggs outside on the sand or the ocean bed or whatever. And the male will then release the sperm and the fertilization will take place outside the body. So this is what we have to know about the class of fish, right? And so they are vertebrates with scaly skin. They have gills, they have fins. This is more of a, a short summary. And this is a more detailed features that you have related to your fish um okay when you talk so uh when we are going to talk about it after fish uh let's talk about amphibians the next class let's choose our next class to be the class of amphibians Right now, when we talk about the class of amphibians again, they are poikilothermic, but they're poikilothermic just like cold blooded, just like fish. Yeah, just like fish, but they have four legs, no scales, so no scales. And they are going to have four legs. Along with that, they are going to, uh, okay, one of the main features is, of course, that they're amphibians, meaning that they can live on water as well as the land, right? Generally, what happens right. is that the, um, uh, generally, the uh, uh, tadpole stage, the initial tadpole stage is the stage that they live in water. And then when they become adult frogs or they become adult amphibians, they tend to um, come onto the land, right? And the, they only go back to the water when they want to lay on the land. So, uh, some common examples of amphibians And they are... they have lungs. Yes, they have lungs. Basically, adult amphibians will have lungs. Adult, um, adult amphibians have lungs. When you're going to talk about a tadpole, a tadpole doesn't have lungs because they live in water. It's only when they are going to turn into an adult amphibian, that's when they will make then that's when they will develop lungs and that's what allows them to survive on land and not only that that uh, the uh, the majority of the life of an adult amphibian adult is spent on land most of their life is on land they go to the water occasionally like when they want to lay eggs they will go to the water so adult amphibian will spend most, most of their life on land it's the uh, tadpole stage where the amphibian actually spends time in water. Okay. Now, when we talk about examples of, you know, your amphibians, you will get toads, you will get frogs, you will get newts, right? These are examples of uh, your amphibians. And when we are talking about, okay, what are some other features that we can uh, go ahead and talk about? They, uh, okay, toads and frogs. So toads and frogs look similar to each other, but they have small differences, right? For example, a toad's skin is drier than that of a frog. So a frog generally has more of a moist, slimy skin. 
toad skin is drier than that of a frog and it actually has glands that produce an unpleasant smell. So a toad has these glands on its skin that produce a very unpleasant smell. And the reason for that is to basically discourage any predators, any uh, you know, animal that might want to eat the toad. So to discourage it, it produces a uh, unpleasant smell from its skin. Newts, on the other hand, newts uh, generally uh, have a tail, right? Newts actually have a tail. So you are able to differentiate between frogs and toads and newts based on these features. Okay. Um, so I told you that they are all going to uh, have uh, four legs, right? In frogs and toads, the hind legs that are the legs that are behind, right? The hind legs have or the hind feet have webbing between the toes, right? They have web feet. And uh, why do they have web feet? They have web feet so that allow, gives them a large surface area to push against the water. So when they're, you know, trying to swim, when they're swimming in the water, so the webbing helps them swim. Newts, on the other hand, you will see that newts have um, newts actually swim by wriggling their bodies. So they wriggle their bodies, you know, sort of like a fish. So they will wriggle their bodies. They will um, have a fish-like movement for their bodies. And that's how they're going to be. Uh, amphibia tend to have a moist skin. Right, uh, with a good supply of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Uh, they also have lungs, like you said, they have lungs that uh, can be inflated. So these are the features that we have related to the class of amphibians. Now, next, let's talk about our class of reptiles. Let's take class reptile. When we talk about class reptiles, so what features do we have to go ahead and see? So reptiles are basically land living vertebrates their skins are dry and the outer layer of the skin forms a uh, basically outer layer of skin has scales on it to minimize water loss okay to minimize loss of water they have this scaly pattern so they have dry scaly skin right their eggs have tough parchment like shells so the eggs will have tough parchment like shell and uh, so um so basically, the fact that they have a tough parchment-like shell means that they don't need to lay their eggs in water. They don't need to put their eggs in a moist environment. The egg will survive even in dry conditions. They are just like uh, amphibians and fish. They are poikilothermic. Or cold-blooded. Both terms are completely correct. Right? But uh, compared to fishes and amphibians, they can still regulate their body temperature a little bit to a certain extent. Not that much, but they can still control their body temperature to a little bit, right? How can you do that? For example, if the body temperature is decreasing, then they can go out under the sun and lay under the sun until their body warms up. 
or if their body is too warm, then they can actually uh, go back to the water and use that to cool themselves down, right? Uh, reptiles include lizards, snakes, turtles, uh, tortoises, crocodiles, all of these are examples of reptiles. Reptiles have, of course, four legs and five toes, right? And uh, when you're going to go ahead and talk about it, So when you're going to go ahead and talk about it, they also reproduce by sexual reproduction. And the uh, fertilization occurs internally. Meaning that uh, the sperm will pass into the female body and the fertilization will take place inside the female body, right? Uh, you wait, in fishes, it uh, occurs externally, in reptiles, it occurs internally, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. In frogs, it also occurs externally. Frogs also, fertilization frog occurs. Yeah, in amphibians, not just frogs, in amphibians, okay. it also occurs externally. All right. Okay. Next class, let's talk about the class. I you wait, hold on, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Can just move it back? Uh, can you just move this for a second? Oh, yes, I'm done. Now you can move on. Um, but also, you don't have to worry about missing anything because um, uh, on the when I will upload the lecture, I will upload all of this as well. Do you upload so, the uh, lecture? Don't worry. Yeah, just letting you know that when I will upload the lectures on the website, I will upload this along with the lectures, so you will get this as well. Okay, then we have the no, class. Just writing the notes, you know, for revising it. Later. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You make your notes in the class, but I'm just telling you from my side that I will give you, uh, you'll get this as well. What I'm writing down, I'll make sure that that's also shared to you. But yeah, you make your own notes as well. That's very good. That's what I used to do. As well, I always like to have this so I can kind of make it. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the class of birds, right? Now, the first thing we have to know is that birds are homeothermic. So meaning that they like are, humanity. yeah, they are going to be warm-blooded animals, right? So they can actually regulate their uh, blood to go, uh, the temperature of the blood or temperature internal temperature of the body to quite an extent, right? Now, they of course they're vertebrates, so they have a vertebral column, but their vertebral column is actually located in their neck. Normally, the vertebral column is in the back, right? Their vertebral column is actually located in the neck. And uh, what happens that this is actually, um, yeah, so vertebra, uh, actually not located in the neck, the vertebral column that, that is located in the neck. The vertebral column or the portion of the vertebral column that is located in the neck is flexible. The rest of the vertebral column are fused together to make a rigid structure, right? So, okay. So the when you talk about the vertebral column, right? So the vertebral column in the when you go to go ahead and talk about the vertebral column, so the vertebral column that is in the portion of the vertebral column that is located in the neck. Okay, so the vertebral column, a portion of it is located in the neck. That form that is flexible, but the rest of the vertebra are actually going to go ahead and fuse with each other to give you a rigid structure. So the reason for that is to basically make it easier, easier for birds to fly. 
along with that the um top layer of the body is covered with feathers right right teacher it's covered with feathers right but on the feet on the toes and the legs we will have scales right the toes and the legs are covered in scale the claws are basically scaly the feathers can be of different kinds some birds have a lot of fluffy feathers so that is mostly for the purposes of insulation uh, some birds have more of like a sleek feather right that is mostly to uh, you know give the bird its shape and bright colors then some birds have really large quill like feathers you know in a quill shape so that's to allow them to fly better now birds have four limbs okay they do have four limbs but the uh, four limbs or the the limbs that are in front of the body modify to form wings so wings are technically considered as limbs okay so they have four limbs but the actual limbs in the front of the body which we call four limbs they are modified to form wings then of course the rear limbs are your claws that the birds have right and they have four toes that allow the bird to you know sit on a branch to search for seeds to catch animals all of that so uh, that is uh, what happens in birds fertilization is going to be internal fertilization is internal and they lay hard egg shell right those are the features that you need to know about birds finally the last class that we have in our animals in so in the vertebrate column basically is class animals sorry class of mammals What features do mammals have? So mammals are warm blooded. That means that they are going to be homeothermic, right? They have again, they have uh, they have four limbs, and they have hair on their body, as compared to birds. Birds have feathers. They also have a diaphragm. So lungs, uh, birds will have lungs, uh, reptiles have lungs, frogs have lungs, but mammals have lungs and a diaphragm. So that sort of sets them apart from the other, uh, you can say, uh, other uh, animals, right? Or other vertebrates. Along with that, they also have mammary glands that allow them to produce milk and feed their young, right? Uh, other features that your class of mammals have is that they give uh, birds to fully formed adults, so they don't lay eggs. They give birth to fully formed uh, to fully form uh, I said adults, right? They give birth to fully form young offspring as compared to other uh, vertebrates, right? Other vertebrates lay eggs. Um, okay, so these are the general features that we have. So, uh, when you're going to go ahead and talk about it, let's quickly revise the features that we have just studied. When we talk about our fish, so the body of fish is covered in scales. What uh, about the body of fish? It's smooth. Yes. Yes. 
the body of amphibians is has moist skin the reptiles moist... have the reptiles dry skin. have dry skin with scales birds have feathers but on their legs and toes they have scale and mammals have hair or we can say fur now other than that movement fishes move by the help of fins amphibian yeah. moves with the help of their web feet right uh, frogs and toads move with the help of web feet and your newts i said they, they swim they by swim wriggling. by the yeah like a by wriggling their bodies by yeah by moving their bodies by wriggling their bodies uh, but they also use web feet they also used web feet as well along with that then you have your reptiles so reptiles used four legs for movement birds used two wings and two legs for movement and mammals have four limbs that allow them to move for reproduction the fishes actually produce externally yeah the fertilization happens externally and mm -hmm. they actually produce a uh, jelly covered eggs in the water right then you have amphibians amphibians also produce jelly covered eggs in the water and they also reproduce externally or uh, fertilize externally not reproduce externally fertilization is external and they also have jelly covered eggs Then when we talk about reptiles, so in reptiles, the reproduction, uh, they produce eggs that have a rubbery, waterproof shell, right? They have a rubbery, waterproof, waterproof shell. And I, yeah, and I told you they have a tough parchment-like shell. So it's rubber, it's waterproof, it's tough, it's parchment-like. Right, and they're laid on land. Okay, so they lay their eggs on land as compared to amphibians and fish. Then, uh, when we go ahead and talk about birds, so birds produce eggs that have a hard shell, they also lay them on uh, uh, land. And mammals do not lay eggs, mammals produce live young. So, uh, that's about reproduction. Then if I talk about okay, different organs that are found. So fish has eyes, but keep this in mind that fish do not have any ears. Okay? But the did you way to, they're fish able to eyes. But it does not have ears. There are no ears in a fish. Ears so are not a found. fish cannot hear? No, they cannot hear using they can they can not hear in the traditional sense, but they can hear in the sense that they can feel vibrations inside the water. So they can actually oh, okay. hear vibrations inside the water and that allows them to basically hear, but they don't have any ears. Amphibia will have both eyes and ears. When I say ears, I mean the inner structure. So if I talk about ear, in, if you take a look at humans, for example, we have the external ear that you and I can see from our eyes, right? And then we have the right. ear canal that goes inside our head. We can't see that. So amphibians, they have ears, but they don't have the external structure. The outside structure is not there. They just have the canal. Similarly, have reptiles only have the canal. They don't have the outside structure. Birds also do not have an outside structure of the ear. They just have the canal. Mammals are the only ones that have both a proper ear canal as well as the external ear. The external ear is known as pinna. They are the only ones to have an external ear called pinna. Right, so the external ear, the outside portion of the ear is known as pinna, and mammals are the only ones that actually have external feature. That's why you know on birds you have never actually seen ear. Right? On reptiles, no one ears. They have the ear canal, but the external structure is not found in any of them. Mammals are the only ones that have it. Then uh, fishes. Uh, when we're going to talk about it, your fishes have that uh and 
become cold blooded and them to breathe and their skin also helps them to breathe. Remember, I told you that uh, they have a skin which allows them to, you know, ex exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide, yes, moist skin with good supply, right? So they breathe both ways by the help of lungs and by the help of skins. Lizards are cold blooded, they also have lungs for breathing. Birds are warm blooded, they have lungs for breathing. They also have a beak. I didn't write down beak, but they have a beak. Mammals are warm blooded, they have lungs for breathing, they have females that have mammary glands. Uh, mammals also have four types of teeth, right? Mammals have four types of teeth, and we will study the types of teeth when we do the topic of uh, you know, digestion and all that. Mammals have four types of teeth, that's also features that is specific to mammals. So, those are that is what we had to know related to the topic of mammals. Now, let's uh, when so that is phylum of your uh, that is your we are done with phylum we have other phylum as well for example we have phylum arthropods artho Phylum arthropods actually include further classes, right? We can have class Crustacea. Crustacea. We can have class Insects. We can have class Centipedes. And we can have class Spiders. Okay? When we talk about arthropod, arthropod basically means jointed leg. Jointed legs. That we have legs that have multiple joints, right? They have jointed legs, legs with multiple joints. And this is a feature that you'll see in all arthropods. All of them have jointed legs. Along with that, they have a thick hard external skeleton, thick hard external skeleton, we call this the cuticle, right? Along with that, they have segmented bodies, right? They have segmented bodies, meaning that their bodies are divided into different portions. They have segmented bodies and not only are they divided into different portions, they are actually proper segments, right? So they have segmented bodies and between the segments, so between two segments, they are going to have uh, flexible joints. They're going to have flexible legs. That allow them to... Sorry? What is your arthropods? Yes, arthropods, exactly. Your arthropods are going to have multiple segments and between the segments, they will have flexible joints which allow them to move, right? So uh, when we go ahead and we talk about it, uh, I'm not going into too much detail about any of them. Uh, over them, right? You don't have to go into too much detail about it. Let's start by talking about our crustacea. So our class crustacea includes your um, lobsters, your shrimps, your crab. They're all going to come under crustaceans in, in crustaceans. So your lobs, crabs, prawns, shrimps, lobsters, all of these are basically your crustacea. We call them crustacea. Right? Lobsters, crabs, shrimps, prawns, these are all examples of crustacea. Now, in crustacea, what do we see? That they have, again, for feature number one, they have an exoskeleton. And they have jointed legs. They also have two pairs of antenna. which are sensitive to uh, touch and to chemicals, right? 
then uh, they also have compound eyes. What are compound eyes? So compound eyes, they have, they have compound eyes. What are compound eyes? Compound eyes are when tens of hundreds of separate lenses come together. So compound eyes are made up of uh, hundreds of separate lenses. Like in our eye, your eye, my eye, we have one single lens. That's it. Right? Each eye has one lens. But in a compound eye, we have hundreds of lenses that are working together to make an image. Right? And they also have uh, so when you're going to go ahead and uh, talk about it, your uh, crustacea have five or more pair of legs. Sorry, five or more pair of legs. They are going to their body. So I told you their bodies are divided into segments, right? So the body of a lobster or body of crustacean is divided into two segments. We have the cephalo thorax and we have the abdomen the cephalothorax is basically the head and the thorax thorax is your middle part the so where you have like in our body our thorax is the region where we have lungs so we have head we have thorax where we have the lungs and then we have the abdomen and then we of course we have legs but we are not crustaceans our body is not segmented the we have uh, the the uh, areas are all connected to each other. So they have cephalothorax, which is the head and the thorax, that's one segment. And then they have the abdomen, right? They have two pairs of antenna and they have one pair of eye and they have an exoskeleton. So that is it. Then along with that, the next class that we can go ahead and talk about is class of insects. So class insects, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, just like insects were very common with them. We can see them anywhere. So they're common with them. I've seen them. Uh, in, what do insects have in common with them? Children, like insects are really common. You have seen them. I have seen them like commonly yeah. everywhere. Yeah, exactly. You have, you basically very easy. Insects. Yeah, they're really common. You know, your butterflies, your bees, mosquitoes. Uh, the house flies, all of these are example of insects, right? So insects, what are the features of insects that you're going to list whenever they ask you in your exam? You are going to say that they have segmented bodies. Segmented bodies, these features, uh, Marva, they will have written at the top for phylum arthropods. So they will have, these features are common. Each and every one of them are going to have these features. So they're going to have segmented bodies as well. They will have a firm exoskeleton, right? They're going to have a firm exoskeleton and, and they are going to have, uh, they have three pairs, sorry, they have three pair, three pair of legs. So three pair of legs means that total number of legs are six, right? So uh, over here, they had five or more pair of legs, crustacea, which means that total is 10. They have three pair of legs, which means total is six. Then they also have compound eyes. And they also have your uh, two pair of wings. So two pair of wings means that total number of wings are four. They have the main wing and then they have a smaller wing, which is known as vestigial wing, remnant, remnant wing. Okay. Then they also have, so the segments in their body, how is their body segmented? Their body is segmented to give us a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Okay, so um, uh, so uh, yeah, these are basically the features of insects. They're going to have three pairs of legs. They're going to have the body divided into thorax, abdomen, and head. They have uh, one pair of antenna. They have one pair of antenna, and they have two pair of wings along with the compound eyes. 
then if i move on to the next classification so let's talk about uh, our classification of spiders so i've written down class spiders but the correct name is arachnids okay we don't have a class spider the correct name is arachnids okay so we have class arachnids so class arachnids includes not just spiders it includes scorpions mites ticks all of these are going to be called your arachnids so arachnids so Spiders, scorpion, ticks, mites, all of these are. So ticks and mites are not insects, they're actually arachnids. Okay, so they have, what features do they have? Their bodies are segmented and they have two segments. They have the, uh, the velothorax. Um, they have the abdomen, right? They have the cephalothorax and they have the abdomen. They have four pair of legs on the cephalothorax. For me, let me just draw this a bit for you. So this is my spider, right? So this region at the top, excuse my bad drawing. I was never good at drawing in animals. Uh, okay. <laughs> so they have something like this, right? Let's say we have something like this. So this top portion is the cephalothorax. And this portion is known as the abdomen. Now, over here, they have the compound eyes, right? Now, the way they work is like this, that they have four pair of limbs on the cephalothorax, right? So, the four pair of limbs look like this. And over here, they have this small pair of limbs. The small pair of limbs is known as a pedipalp. Right, so they have two pedipalps and then they have got two longer pairs, right? Two longer pairs. The longer pairs are known as a, a calibre. C E, I think it's E L I C E R A. -E. So, uh, they have four pair of limbs on the uh, on the cephalothorax. So, uh, uh, they are going to have four pair of limbs, uh, four uh, pair of limbs, not four uh, limbs in total, four pair of limbs, right? Two are going to be this and then two are going to be this. And they are attached to the cephalothorax. Right. Uh, then you're going to actually I have labeled them. I think one second. Sorry, Marva. My drawing is not good, and I've also done an incorrect labeling on it. So, did you different like uh, one of these are uh, have different names? Yeah, hold on one second. I'm just telling you one second. Let me just draw this properly. Let me uh, write it down first so that uh, it's there. It's not easy to draw. This is known as the pedipal. And then over here, they have a small structure. And this is known as chelicity. And then along with that, of course, they have their normal pair of legs. Okay, so this is the four limbs in their head as well. In the cephalothorax as well, they have two pedicap 
at two calcium uh, and the pedi pelts basically help in the reproduction and the calcium are actually used by the spiders to bite into their prey and then release a poison to paralyze them and then eat them right that's why i was telling you about these terminologies uh, so they have a pedi pelt the pedi pelt is going to help them in uh, reproduction the calicree is going to help them in biting into their prey and actually killing their prey. So how is pedi so, pelt uh, help them in reproduction? Uh, that is, Amarva, uh, too uh, much uh, out of your course, right? That's too much what? out of your course. It, it, it uh, basically um, helps them in finding the mate and it helps them in the actual process of mating uh, in the actual reproduction fertilization will take place the way fertilization takes place but it helps them in finding a mate it helps them in actual the, the actual process of mating that they do so it helps them in that they have uh they also have several pair of simple eyes they do not have compound eyes they have several pair of simple eyes So that is what you need to know about your uh, class of anarchists, uh, arachnids. Then we have our class. Okay, the last class I had told uh, you, you class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go back. Back for a while. Yeah, just try to. Okay, so now you can. Okay. The last class I told you was centipede, but just like it's spiders, the name of the class is not centipede. The name of the class is <laughs> class myrapods. Myrapods. Right? Class myrapods. So inside it, we have millipedes and centipedes. They are actually found inside the class of myrapods. Right? So in uh, myrapods, they again have a head. and a segmented body, right? But uh, there is no obvious division. If you look at a centipede, so it's got a lot of small, small segments, right? If you take a look at a centipede, yes, it has a lot of small, small segments. So you can't actually see distinctly or separately which one is the thorax, which one is the abdomen. They just have a lot of pointed segments. That's basically it. That's all they have. So they have a head and then they have a body that has uh, that they basically have a segmented body. They have a segmented body uh, and they have a pair of legs on each body segment, right? They have a pair of legs on each body segment. So that means if they have 10 body segments, so they have 10 pair of legs, right? So they have a pair of legs on each body segment, right? They have a pair of legs on each body segment. Um, they have one pair of antenna and they have one pair of, again, simple legs. So a spider had several pairs. They have one pair of simple eyes. They are centipedes or carnivorous. While millipedes are uh, they basically eat uh, vegetable matter. The honeymoon Yeah, exactly. So uh, they usually have, so they a pair of legs of each body. So generally they have around 10 pairs generally, but they definitely can have a lot more than that as well. Body is not obviously, there is no obvious division between the head and between the abdomen. They have one pair of antenna and one pair of simple eyes. And that is all you need to know about your, uh, about your um, class of my records, right? My records. So, uh, uh, this is basically the classification in the phylum of 
your arachnids. Now, along with that, the other phylum that we have would not need to study their details. I'll just give you a quick overview. We have phylum Anelidia. Final Anelidia uh, includes uh, worms with segmented bodies. So your tapeworm, earthworm, all these worms are come under the phylum of Anelidia. We have phylum mollusk, which basically includes your snails. Snails, slugs, oysters, uh, squid, octopus, all of these come under the example of phylum mollusk. And then we have phylum nematode. Nematode is the, they have a, it's a parasitic worm. Okay, so parasitic round worms, they're extremely, 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 extremely so small. And often when you talk about inside uh, apple, for example, that is rotting. So it's rotting because these really, really small microscopic uh, worms are eating it up, right? They are found in the soil. They help in breaking down dead animals and dead plants. They help in breaking down on them. Uh, they are parasites. They can even infect humans. Uh, so those are nematodes, and that's it. You don't the other phylums you don't need to know about in any more detail okay. than this. Even if you don't need to know this much either. But I just told you in case in a past paper question or in a future exam question they just mention the term so you at least know what it is. But this okay. the other ones these features you have to go ahead and know. This over here this is the uh, periplex. And this over here, uh, next to the eye, they have not drawn it properly. Is the, uh, is the uh, the one they used to give it the poison? Yeah, or exactly, something. exactly. The uh, the kailikira. the kilikira helps in poisoning it. And then of course they have the actual four pair of limbs, right? The actual four pair of legs. They have those. These are your insects again. They have two pair of wings, right? And uh, these are your reptiles, mammals, and we have gone over all of this. Okay, so we have basically covered the animal kingdom. So, Marva, we will go ahead and stop it over here for today.